and ordering different mayonnaise and hiring new fucking bras without talking to me first. This is your brother's house, okay? Yeah, remember? I was running it fine without you. Why didn't he leave it to you then? Hey folks, my name is Bruce, and this is my series, Film Illustrated. If you're into food or food culture, then you probably already know all the popular cooking shows out there. But as you've seen from the art, what I really want to talk about is the bear. I just want to say, if you like the art or the video, please subscribe or hit the bell icon. Now that's out of the way. The premise of the bear is about the chef in the fine dining world, forced to return home and run his family sandwich shop after the death of his brother. But the details are where the bear really shines. Even though it's a piece of fiction, I think it shows what it's like to work in a kitchen more than any other food media I can think of. One of the ways that this show is brilliant is that it portrays the work in an unglorified and unromanticized way. I think the food media we consume are often obsessed with the idea of fine dining and master chefs. Their food is often fetishized, and we forget or turn a blind eye to all the people and all the work it took to get there. But for the bear, it's an essential part of the show. While it does acknowledge the fine dining world Carmi came from, it's cleverly used to accentuate the differences between him and Sydney versus the rest of the kitchen. Yo, housekeeping chefs! Again, what the f are you saying? Anyone understand what he's saying? No, housekeeping means you have to clean your stations because this place is f***ing gross. I refer to everybody as chef because it's a sign of respect, and I never said I couldn't figure out the spaghetti. I said it doesn't make any sense on this menu, so it is done. The end. With an average runtime of 30 minutes, they take time to show us details like the breakdown of a kitchen or taking labels off of containers to save grief for the dishwashers. They also talk about the general cost of running a restaurant, the labor, ingredients, and how hard things can be for the people running the business. All of our time, money, work gets sucked up into this place. The only thing we get back is chaos, resentment, these are all integral parts of being in or around a kitchen that very few shows focus on, but the bear does. These scenes are often serving double duty, like showing us the routine of a kitchen or getting us to know the characters. But it also shows that the showrunner, Christopher Storer, Joanna Callow, and the advisors care deeply about life inside the kitchen and getting these details right. Throughout the season, the show is also able to capture the culture inside the kitchen so effectively. It's been a decade and a half since I last worked in a professional kitchen, but this show makes me feel like I never left. The camaraderie, oh, hey. it's tender, it's nice, we happy, we happy. Hazing. You don't take my onions, did you? Vulgar humor. Your mom teaches me doing sex. Oh, that's not cool. <laughs> and unfortunately, Sydney, you blowing somebody down at the Telegraph? Casual sexism are often part of the day-to-day -day life in a kitchen. But the other aspect of the culture the show captures is the structure they work in. Um, what, what did you have in mind? Sorry. Old school brigade. You run it. <sighs> Respectfully, no. In episode three, despite Sydney's protest, Carmi introduces the French brigade system. This is a hierarchical structure which can be very efficient because of the defined roles. Right, so uh, Carmi is the head chef guy. He's the chef de cuisine or the CDC. Uh, I would be, I am. I am, the, I am the Sioux. Like hierarchy. More just like a regular, chill, archy. Uh... But because of the power dynamics at play, it often breeds resentment and toxicity. The show cleverly pairs this with the phrase, yes, chef, which can often feel like a rallying cry. But in the context of a brigade, it can also take on a militaristic meaning, similar to yes, sir. And that's exactly the dynamic we see between Carmi and Sydney. Tina's on the onions. I'm on the no. oh, Tina should be on onions. Yes, I chef. told her earlier, like you said. To yes, Della chef. Yes, chef. Thank you. Carmi doesn't care about what Sydney has to say or what went wrong. All he wants to hear is yes, chef. In a way, it's unsurprising that the militaristic structure boils everyone down to their titles and their jobs. It disincentivizes communication other than when it pertains to accomplishing the goal. When I said I didn't think that the brigade was a good idea, you didn't listen. And it's not that you told me that I had to. That's fine, whatever. But, but you just didn't really listen. And, and of course, similar to Carmi, we see the stress manifest in the way Sydney treats those below her. Um, not good. So, 
Love the white bang, love that energy. Maybe we do it like on the floors because they are so dirty. I almost broke my neck. And honestly, I think I'm gonna pass out just looking at them. Um, what's up? Yes, Jeff. Great, okay. It's fine. Fine? Did that piss you off? No, nope. if you are happy with this, then I am. The brigade system isn't inherently bad, but in some circumstances, it can incentivize toxic or abusive behavior. Why do you hire fucking idiots? Do you like working with fucking idiots? I'll do better. Say yes, chef. Yes, chef. Can you handle this? Is it too much? Especially in prolonged high pressure situations, like a kitchen. The flip side to all this is that there can also be great camaraderie. Despite having a confrontation with Marcus just a moment ago, when Sydney accidentally spills the real stock in the walk in, he jumps in without hesitation or talking back and helps her clean up the mess. Similarly here, when Marcus tells Carmi it was him who blew the fuse, rendering the kitchen inoperable, Carmi doesn't flip out or berate him. I won't make a mistake again. Yeah, you will. But not because you're you, just because shit happens. This scene is played really low key, but Carmen's response here is crucial. Marcus already feels bad about the situation. No amount of yelling on Carmen's part would change that or be constructive. It would only tear Marcus down further or reinforce his impossible notion of never making any mistakes. Bad temper and abusive behaviors are not uncommon in kitchens, and we certainly see plenty of that from Carmi in the later episodes. But I think this scene is also meant to be aspirational, in that it's a better way to work and a healthier way to lead. Up till now, we haven't really talked about how the show is shot and how the editing conveys the level of stress one can feel inside the kitchen. It perfectly mirrors the poor communication and the chaos in the earlier episodes. And as they dial in the system and communication improves, the shot becomes more steady and the editing becomes less frenetic. Throughout the show, the characters are perpetually under pressure, either from the line, interpersonal issues, or faulty equipment. They're constantly finding small moments to breathe, de-stress, in order to march forward. But of course, it all inevitably adds up and manifests itself elsewhere in life. With Carmi, we see it in his dreams, and we hear about his anxiety attacks. No, I just I have trouble breathing sometimes, and I wake up screaming. What? I, I know tons of people that cry out of nowhere. When did the breathing problem start? I think maybe sometime in New York. I was throwing up every day before work. Oh, okay. Well, that sounds chill. And in the heat of the moment, we see how that pressure can expose the worst side of a person. In episode 7, they discover that the pre-order had been mistakenly left on, leaving them in the weeds. Here, Carmi kicks in high gear, reorganizing and attempting to solve the problem. However, when the pressure finally becomes too much, he ultimately lashes out at his staff. Okay, I'm gonna talk to Mark. Get, get the order. F off my expo chef now! Get the f off! Thank you! Why are you fucking with me? 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 Huh? Get the fuck back to work! Move! Alienating both Sydney and Marcus. The bickering between Sydney and Richie also escalates. Sydney's jab becomes truly personal and vicious. And when Tina reaches out to see if she's okay, Sydney recoils and pushes her away. I think the show captures the feeling of being slammed and in the weeds perfectly, and how that stress and chaos can change or reveal a worse side of yourself. Would anyone that's been to fewer than 15 meetings like to speak? Another thing that stress also facilitates is alcohol and drug abuse. Even though the bear doesn't depict active drug use, it shows us the aftermath and how that wound touches everyone else around it. My name is Carmen. My, um, my brother's an addict. My, my brother was an addict. It is the core internal conflict for many of the characters and consequently how they relate to the world around them. Yo, I love Mikey. You know how much I love that kid. But this, this is real and alive. The show doesn't look away from the issue, but treats it candidly and with care as it is undeniably a part of the culture and the industry at large. It's clear the bear cares about representing the people and the culture they make up. Despite Carmi being a Michelin caliber chef, the show is never about how amazing he is or how great his food is. And unlike many shows out there, it doesn't just celebrate fine dining or those who we call master chefs. The bear acknowledges all the people that do the daily grind in the kitchen, 
It doesn't glorify any of the labor or the culture. Instead, it presents it as is, warts and all. And brunch. Fuck brunch. Brunch. I'm gonna get rocked tonight. Oh, huh? absolutely fucking destroyed, yeah. So what did you guys think of the bear? I'd love to hear your takes, especially if you've been or still are in the restaurant industry. Also, I'm super excited for season two. I cannot wait to see where they take the show and how they wrap up certain loose ends from this season. But for now, if you like the art or enjoy the video, please subscribe or hit the bell icon. Till then, be good to one another and take care.